So if I had little ones here in front of me, I was going to talk with them about um, the theme of directions in our Bible readings today. So when I say the word directions, what do you guys think of? Okay, one at a time. Oh, north, south, east, and west. Okay, I was going to go there. Yeah, so um, yeah, I brought my arrow. So north, south. Let's see, you guys are, okay, east, is that right? And west. I, I, I had right and left ready to go. I didn't think of the north, south, east, and west, but good one. What else? What else do you think of when you think of directions? Anything different than the directional? A map, yeah. So we've been on the road for two days and we needed to use our GPS. We needed directions to get where we were going. We needed to follow some steps. Or directions to make a cake, right? Steps to make a cake. So different, different ways to think of directions. Well, in our Bible readings today, you'll hear about um, two men who needed to figure out the direction they needed to be looking when life got really hard, when life got really hard and scary. So first of all, you'll hear about Job, who needed to be reminded to look to God when the life around him got really, really hard. And he remembered, or he was reminded by God himself, that in spite of everything going on around him, he needed to look up to God because God is still God and God is still in control. He's still in charge even when things are swirling around him. And then uh, Peter was reminded to look up to Jesus and away from the scary waves that his eyes had fallen to um, so that Jesus could rescue him. He looked up and reached out and Jesus rescued him when he was sinking. So. Looking up to God is important, but some people have a really hard time with that. They don't know how to look up to God and to trust him. It's almost like they need some directions. They need the steps to become a believer. And the Bible gives that to us. The Bible gives us directions very clearly in scripture today of how many people come to faith. And um, so scripture tells us that you need the power of the Holy Spirit to believe. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us to believe. But then scripture asks, but how will people believe if they haven't heard that Jesus came to be their savior? And how will they hear if no one tells them? And it's up to us who already know that Jesus came to die on a cross to pay for our sins and rose from the grave to, to conquer death. We're the ones who need to go and tell. And then those steps can be put in place. They can hear, they can believe, and they can be saved. But even with all of that, even when you, you believe, like Job and, and Peter loved God. They knew God and they loved him. But when things started swirling around and life got hard and life got sad, they took their eyes off of God. They, they didn't look up any longer. They looked all around. Life swirled around. And so the Holy Spirit comes in and helps us in those times, too. When we're looking the wrong direction, when things get scary or hard, and our eyes, you know, start looking at all the things around us and, and fear sets in, the Holy Spirit helps us to repent, which the little kids were going to hear. That means say you're sorry. <laughs> say you're sorry and turn back. They won't know what repent means. But repent, turn back to God. And then the Holy Spirit also helps us to look to God and trust him in spite of what's going on around us. So there you go, big people. <laughs> I'll close this in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful, loving, faithful congregation and, and your word that speaks to us regardless of if it's in little kid language or our big kid language. Mature our faith, Lord, and just help us to understand every day more and more what your word is saying to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.